Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on another video here. We're looking at page 49 in our math notebook. Again, that's page 49 in our math notebook. And we're gonna be talking about tape diagrams. So I'm gonna zoom in to look at our first problem. And tape diagrams uh, can be very useful. They can also be kind of a pain if you're drawing them out. So I highly recommend using tape diagrams um, when you're looking at something and wanting to visualize it. But once you are expanding on these tape diagrams to solve larger problems, it will definitely be easier to calculate instead of drawing tape diagrams. So we'll give you an example here. It says here, draw tape diagrams to represent and, follow the, and solve the following situation. So we have the first ratio we're going to represent, which is four to three. So um, I would write this as four to three, possibly like this if I wanted to. And let's make... I'm going to change the colors a little bit here. I'm going to make four in blue, sorry, four in green, and three in blue. So I would represent four as four pieces of equal size tape. There we go. Four to pieces of tape to the three blue. Okay, and I could shade that in if I wanted to, but this is basically it. You've got four green pieces of tape or blocks, if you want to call it that, compared to the three blue pieces of tape. You can see that the four is larger. Okay, so there's our first situation. The second one is exactly the same, five to eight. So I'm just going to rewrite this again. I'm going to use different colors, though. Let's use yellow or orange for five. Five to eight. We'll make eight red. How about that? And to do this, I'm just going to draw five pieces of tape or five blocks. Obviously, making it neat is better. There's three, four, five, and then I'm going to do the eight red ones. And if you make them pretty even, it makes a lot more sense. I mean, if you're making these pieces the same size, if you're making them different sizes, then it kind of defeats the purpose, I suppose. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. So you can see the ratio five to eight. Eight's much greater than five. I'm not going to do four to seven. Same exact idea where you're putting pieces of tape down to represent the ratio um, visually like that. Okay. Now we have our first word problem here. The class of it has a ratio of five boys to two girls. So I'm going to do the same thing. Five boys to two girls. I'm going to represent boys with blue pieces of tape. One two, three, four, five. And then girls, I'm going to use, um, let's use green. One, two. You can see the ratio of, oop, the ratio of boys. Sorry about that. That happens every once in a while. The ratio of boys to girls, but there are many more boys to girls in this class. Five to two. Okay, and then finally, we have a couple problems. So we have the first problem here. Elizabeth has pencils and pens in her pencil case. The ratio of pens to pencils is two to three. If she has 14 pens, how many pencils does she have? So I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna start off writing um, pens using a tape. Uh, the tape method here, tape diagram. So ratio of pens is two to pencils, which is three. Put that line there. Okay, so doing a tape diagram, two pieces of tape for the pens to three pieces of tape for the pencils. So you can see there are more pencils than pens. Um, so if she has 14 pens, what she actually has is 14. Let me get blue. 
If she has 14 pens, how do I turn this 2 into a 14? Well, I multiply it by 7, don't I? So I took this 2 and I multiplied it by 7 to get 14. So I would take these two strips and I would add well, 12 more. And I would do the same for the three pencils. So whatever I multiply the first part of the ratio by, I got to multiply the second part of the ratio by. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 7 as well. She's going to have more pencils than pens because we know the ratio is 2 to 3, 2 pens for every 3 pencils. So pencil-wise, if she has 14 pencils, or sorry, 14 pens, she's going to have 21 pencils. That's a little bit messy, so I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. Now, you could draw out the tape diagram and figure it out that way if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. But calculating helps. Looking at the tape diagram just to get a visualization of it is what it's for. And then finally, we have one more down at the bottom. Oh, two more. Sorry. The ratio of boys to girls in the math club is 4 to 5. If there are 20 girls in the club, how many boys are there? So I'm going to do boys to girls again. Boys will go with blue. Girls, let's go with orange. Okay, so it's five girls and four boys in the class. That's the ratio, four to five. There may be more than that. Um, but I'm going to make my tape diagram here. Four pieces of tape representing the four boys. And then girls will do five pieces representing the five girls. Okay, not exactly to scale, but you can tell there are more girls than boys, I think. And if there are 20 girls there, well, how many boys would there be then? And you can see we're basically just making equivalent fractions. We're doing the same thing we did before, except this time we're using tape diagrams to kind of help out a little bit. So how do I get from 20 or 5 to 20, 5 girls to 20 girls? I'd multiply this by 4. And like we always do when we multiply the bottom part of a fraction, we have to multiply the top part of a fraction or ratio also by the same number, by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So if there are 20 girls, there are 16 boys. And again, I could take this tape measurement and say, draw out, you know, four more, three more rows to make 16. Um, but it's easier just to calculate and using the tape diagram to kind of visualize it. We have one last one here. Number one says <laughs> another number one. <laughs> I have a bag of Jolly Ranchers with a ratio of three blue to five red. If I have a total of 48 Jolly Ranchers, how many are blue and how many are Jolly Ranchers or how many blue and how many red Jolly Ranchers do I have? What a tough one. Okay. Well, I do know we have three blue Jolly Ranchers. I'm going to put blue here. Okay. And we got three and then red. I've got five. And then I'm also going to do this total down below. Total, because we're going to be talking about total here. We have eight total, right? Okay, so that'd be three blue Jolly Ranchers. And blue Jolly Ranchers definitely look like pieces of tape when you line them up. And then five red Jolly Ranchers. Not like pieces of tape, but like our diagram, if you were to line them up without the wrappers on. And then I'm going to do a tape diagram for the total number of Jolly Ranchers, too, which is eight. So let's do that as well. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. But the question is, what if I have a total of 48 ranchers? How many are blue? How many are red? Okay. So I'm going to put a little dividing line here, and I'm going to say total now is 48 So we need to find out how many are red and how many are blue.
Okay. So looking at this, I know that I can turn, let's use orange. I know I can turn an eight into a 48. And I know I can do that because eight times six is 48. So eight times six is 48. Now that I know that, I can multiply five times six to find out how many red Jolly Ranchers I'm gonna have. So I'm gonna multiply five times six as well. Five times six is 30. So I'll have 30 red Jolly Ranchers. And I'm gonna do the same for the blue Jolly Ranchers because these are all the same when I compare them to our uh, equivalent ratio. So I'm going to, going to multiply three times six as well. And three times six is 18. Let me make that in blue. Okay. So how many blue and red Jolly Ranchers would I have? I would have 18 blue and 30 red Jolly Ranchers. And what I'm doing here is I'm backing up this claim by showing the work, all right? If I wasn't showing the work, I would not be able to give the answer and back up the claim the same way. And I showed the tape diagrams, showed the equivalent ratios on the other side. So thank you for joining me with notes today. Again, this was a lot of notes. If you need to take a break, if you need to pause, if you need to rewind, you can do that with this video. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.